service, uh, looking forward to everything God's going to do. We've had some great services already, and I don't know about you, but my heart's been stirred, been really praying and seeking the Lord, asking God to do some great things during this revival, and uh, just putting it in the Lord's hands, whatever He wanted. Uh, just, you know, I have my own personal expectations, things I'd like to see, but ultimately I just said, God, whatever you want to do, you know, help our hearts to be willing to do whatever you desire for us to do. If you challenge us and show us an area we need to do something, then we'll be repentant. We'll get down on our face before the Lord and we'll make things right so we can we can keep that fire burning in our lives. But uh, again, it's thankful to have, we're thankful to have Brother Hanks and Sister Hanks with us again tonight and believe in the Lord. He's going to use Brother Hanks to preach the Word of God tonight to us. And we have several different visitors, people that have come tonight. I don't know everybody's name. It's good to have you folks on the front here. And uh, also good to have folks in the back. Sister, I would have forgot your name. Is it Donna. Donna. I know it's over with a D. Okay. And sometimes Alan. Alan. my memory doesn't work as good. But I, you, we know each other. That's what matters. Friends <laughs> will say, yeah, yeah, we know each other. Hey, girl. <laughs> but uh, it's good to have them, Brother Ron and Sister did I hear Brother Hanks called Theresa? Or is it Teresa? I started to say, well, maybe I was saying it. I didn't know how it was. Teresa or Theresa, but praise the Lord. Good to have you guys again with us. They've been with us every, uh, all, ever since Sunday. And all our good home folks, and it's good to have Sister Sonia with us, and all of her family, and some of my family. My Aunt Norma, we call her Norm. It's just N-O-R-M, that's, that's short. But uh, it's good to have my cousin and her her daughter with us this evening. What, what do you say we go ahead and pray and ask the Lord to have his way and we just believe the Lord to do something really great in this service. And I trust the Lord. If you'll put everything in you, if you'll put all of your heart into this service, I believe you'll leave and you'll say, man, what a service. I wasn't disappointed. I believe that with all of my heart. Will you stand to your feet tonight all across the house of the Lord? I want you to pray with me, and I want you to pray from your heart, not just from your lips. I really want you to mean business when you pray, thinking about whatever you're going to say. And When you pray tonight, I want you to ask the Lord to use you in this service. If the Lord has blessed you with any gift or talent, if you can just worship the Lord. I want you to be used of the Lord, and also I want God to speak to you, and I want your heart to be open and receptive to the Lord. Will you pray with me right here tonight? Lord God, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the great privilege that we have to be your, your bride tonight, the chosen. I pray tonight, God, that you'll begin to breathe down from heaven into this service. Let us feel the very breath of God, the presence of God. We ask you to let the anointing of the Holy Ghost flow freely in this house. Lord, that we'll know from the very beginning of this service to the last amen that you were in this place and that you were with us. You've met with your people. I pray, God, through the singing tonight that we'll feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, that we'll feel conviction during this service, God, that our hearts will be drawn to an altar of prayer. And, Lord, that you'll begin to restore and renew and revive in this service. Everyone that is here that needs it, Lord, if there's someone sick in their body tonight, we pray that you'll heal their body. If there's someone that needs deliverance bound with the affliction and addiction and vices, I pray, God, that you'll set the captive free in Jesus' name. Open up the prison doors tonight that they can come out of that place that they're in. And I pray tonight, if there be anyone that's needing to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that they'll leave refreshed and revived and baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. And we pray tonight, God, that every soul that is in 
leave this place that they be backslid, running from you. I pray, God, that they'll run back to the Father's house and they'll be began to see and know that you still love them and care. And I pray that you'll restore them in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, if there's a marriage in trouble, put it back together, Lord, that you'll begin to revive, even in the home, Lord, families and relationships, mending and healing in Jesus' name tonight. And we're going to give you praise for every beautiful thing that you do in this place. And if you agree with that, will you say amen with me tonight? Amen. If you just turn around and wave at everybody around you, hey, how y'all doing? Praise the Lord. God bless you. Get ready. Let's worship the Lord as we sing for the Lord tonight. I haven't seen this song in quite a while, so I'm going to sing this, and then Sister Miranda is going to take over to show me how it's done. Amen. Appreciate my uh, cousin for helping us out on the drums tonight. Give my cousin a hand. Amen. Love all my family. Little David, oh so small. Old wife, oh so tall. The odds were just too high for little David. So small, all his load. With the power of God, he was clothed. He said, the devil talked tonight. Give it to you, Lord, with the eye. Said, the battle talked
You know what? You ain't got to be raptured out of here to leave some things behind. When you get saved, amen, a lot of old things. The old man passed away, but behold, all things become new this evening. We're going to get ready to receive our evening tithes and offering, and then we're going to have a few folk come around and sing a little bit for us tonight. So privileged to have some good people here that are able to sing. I was thinking to myself, maybe this means I won't have to do very much tonight. I just kind of moderate and listen to some preaching and get in the altar and, and thank God for help. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes. Hallelujah. So, so good to see you. We're going to begin, begin to receive our uh, evening offering, like I said, in our tithes. And so if... Uh, if there's anyone that wasn't able to be here during regular service and you'd like to give tithes, all you have to do is put it on the envelope or in the square machine. Uh, the offering tonight is going to be going to our visiting speaker, Brother Harold Hanks. And uh, we are grateful to have him with us. We said that in uh, the last few services. I'll remind you again, uh, there's a lot of people that we could have here. And I don't know of anybody that I can imagine that um, would be a greater honor than to have Brother Hanks with us. I told my daughter-in-law this morning, we were headed to a job, and I said, so if I kick the bucket, I, you probably didn't know this, but Brother Hanks is supposed to be like doing a funeral or something. So, just so you knew that. So if anything happens, you'd be like, oh Lord, have mercy. I have to tell Sister Hanks, you got to cancel next week. you got to go take care of Brother Joe. Amen. But anyway, but it's a great honor to have him with us, and uh, there's a lot of different people that have been blessed by Brother Hanks' ministry, and that's obvious by some of the people that visit, and one of the things, like I've said consistently, is he is a consistent man of God and his family and his wife. And that just blesses me because you see so many people that let go and some that run for a little while, they quit. But I'm thankful that he's continuing to run and doing it for the Lord. And I believe his heart is in the right place. And to me, that matters more than probably anything. There's a lot of people that do things and their heart is not in the right place. And that's one of the reasons why that we have so much confidence in him. So when you give tonight, you know that the offering that you give is going to bless one of the greatest ministries, in my opinion, that I know of. So if you will, stand to your feet tonight get ready to give. And also, um, I hope I don't butcher this up, Brother Hanks, but I know he's got some books. And Sister Meyer should probably be the one to take care of this because she's kind of become the spokesman for that. He may even have to do like a commercial, you know, call Spectrum up and say, I need to do a commercial and call her. She'll do it for you. But anyway, there's some books in the foyer, and uh, he's got some discipleship books and um, devotion. Discipleship and devotion. I'll try to remember that by tomorrow night. I have it all down pat, Brother Hanks. And those books are $12 each, is that right? And I'll let him explain to you how it all came about, but uh, phenomenal material. My wife's already fell in love with it, and she's already got the victory, so I'm going to buy her five more books. So I'm thankful for that. And... Uh, I don't know, whenever the next set's coming out, I got my order in already. <laughs> I got to be careful, I get myself in trouble. Amen. So we're going to give as given unto the Lord tonight. What I want you to do is just bring your offering up tonight, put it in the offering pan, if you will. And we have the square machine, so if you're here and you don't want to give through the offering pan, you want to give through a credit card, you're welcome to do that. Also, if you just want to give right from your cell phone, or you're at home, you can do that by going to our church website. Brother Danny may already have that on the screen right now. So we can bow your heads tonight as we get ready to pray and ask the Lord for his will and way over this offering tonight. Sister Amanda, will you stand up and bless the Lord's offering, please? Amen. Praise the Lord. Just bring your offering on up, put it in an offering pan, and we'll make sure that that goes to the right place tonight. Brother Ron, if you want to get ready, come on up here and get ready to sing for us. So close to have you tonight. Sure appreciate every one of you that are here tonight. I believe we're going to have a good service in the Lord.
It's a good figure. I was going to sing another one, but I think the Lord wants y'all to hear this song. And, uh, I think he's fixing to split the eastern sky again. I hear the sound. Number two. I'll see if I can sing it a little better than him. <laughs> Bless him. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. As closer now than it's ever been, I can almost hear the trumpet. Praise the Lord. 
Aren't you thankful for that song tonight? Amen. Looking forward to the day the Lord takes his church on out of here. We're going to get ready here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to ask my cousin if she will sing something for us. I like to try to get her to sing when she does come over and visit with us. And while she's getting ready to sing, I apologize. You don't have a drummer. You can't drum and sing too. Or maybe. We'll see. But, uh, but anyway, I was doing some praying tonight. I was thinking about a lot of different things. And one of the things that came to my mind while I was down talking to the Lord in prayer I was reminded of Jacob wrestling all night long to the breaking of the day and began to think about the effort, the energy, and the determination that he had to see it through, to get what it was that he wanted. And I, I just began to wonder to myself, just thinking about me, and I'm sure, you know, we can all apply this to ourselves, but I was thinking about myself, just how much effort and energy are we willing to expend to be able to get what it is that we need? And uh, when we're in revival, we have great opportunity laid before us and as the table, God has just spread out and allow us to come and dine. Just how much energy and effort, just what are we willing to put into it to receive? And I know that we're living in a microwave generation. That we're, easy, we're just used to going up to Burger King and getting a burger and be down the road and have it eaten in 15 minutes. But I believe that if you want anything that's real and worth something, you're going to have to, you know, sometimes you've got to fight for it and you're going to have to labor for it. Uh, there's many different men of God, prophets, and different people through the Word of God that you see that because of their tenacity and because of their desire and their, their motivation, they got what they were after because they, they, they had a I'm not going to quit attitude. And they were going to put everything into it. And I wonder tonight, are you willing to put everything into this service? You say, I worship Him with everything that's in me. I praise Him with everything that's in me. Uh, Brother Hanks, we're going to preach Him to death, and he's going to preach with everything in him tonight. Uh, but, uh, but in all seriousness, we're going to put everything in. We get in the altar, we're going to pray, we're going to talk to the Lord, we're going to put everything into that altar call. If you're willing to do that, I, I just believe within my heart, this revival is just going to keep on doing this right here. It's going to keep on getting better, more better, more better. How many believe that? Amen. It's possible. I want you to put everything in it. If you can, give my cousin a hand. If you will, stand if you let's worship the Lord. If you're physically able to see him. If you're here for the first time, you've never heard him before, you're going to find out he reads the Bible. So <laughs> it's really good. My cousin introduced um, introduced me at one time, a long time ago. We went to Oco and he was doing a revival there. And, and um, he said, this man can really, really preach it out. And I was like, okay, you know, I only knew of him that could preach it out. So um, when I went, I was like, wow, you know, there's number two. <laughs> there's another one. Um, but we all know this song, and uh, my, co my cousin is the first one I've ever heard sing it, and ever since then, it's stuck with me. It's something that when I feel like I cannot get out of my feelings, like, you know, we've all been there where we feel like we're just drowning, and even though um, we're in that place, in that moment, we got to remember that Jesus is still on the boat, amen? Yeah. we got to know that, you know, we may not see him in the flesh, but he's there. And when he was in, in, in that boat, in the flesh, they were still scared. So how, how much more are we going to be afraid? He understands that. But we got to pick ourselves back up and say, you know what? I know you're there, God, and I'm going to trust you no matter what I'm going through. So y'all sing that with me. Jesus, the disciples were dead. 
my hands and praise the Lord. Hey, man, I just want you to take a minute and love on the Lord. I feel His presence in this place. Hallelujah. I don't want to get in a hurry. I just want to just feel after the Lord to see And we just reach up, begin to praise Him like He deserves tonight. Hallelujah. We just magnify you and praise you. In the name of Jesus. Play something, Sister Amanda. I just feel the presence of the Lord in this place. And I don't want to bypass the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just wave your hand say, I love you, Lord. If you mean it from your heart, tell him you love it if you mean it. We praise you tonight, Lord. Oh, we're way behind on our praise to the honest. Having given him the glory that he deserves like he deserves it in a long time. But as a people, we begin to magnify you tonight, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. Fall down before you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. 
Jesus. If there's anyone that deserves that praise, I believe it is the Lord. What do you say? Hey, man, is anybody here tonight can say the Lord has been good to me? And you mean it with all your heart. Praise the Lord. He's been good to me. We're going to get ready to have Brother Hanks come around and preach to us tonight. Uh, I'm sure we could have some more singing, and we could probably do that for the altar service. Uh, but we're going to get ready and have him to come around tonight. And I want you to make sure that you have his undivided, he has your undivided attention tonight. And that you just open up the door of your heart and say, God, talk to me. Can you do that tonight? Just say, Lord, talk to me. It's easy for us to look to the left or the right and say, well, that might be good for him. Or I've even been in service before and in my own flesh. Now, if you had never done this, well, you may never and never had to pray about it. I thought, well, boy, they're really getting preached to today. <laughs> but you know what? We don't need to do that. We need to say, Lord, take care of business right here in me. Give Brother Hanks a hand as he comes around tonight. And Sister Hanks, so wonderful to have her with us tonight, too. Amen. Isn't it glad to be in church tonight? Anybody happy about that? Woo, anybody come to have church with me? All right. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Appreciate the mu music and the musicians. We uh, appreciate your help tonight. I didn't know Brother Ron could sing like that. Wow. We. And then uh, my piano player showed up. Praise God. And we are delighted to have you tonight. Well, we got folks from all over the place, so I'm not going to call names tonight, but we are delighted you're here. We've got some from Winter Haven. We got some from Ocala. We got some from the other side of Leesburg. We got some from Okoy. We got some from parts unknown. <laughs> Only God knows where they're from. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we are, are thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to have you tonight and to be in the house of the Lord with us. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been blessed, and the Lord's touched my heart this week, and I appreciate His goodness and mercy. Well, I wished it was packed out. That's what we were looking for. But, hey, man, I'm going to have church no matter how many come. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, I, when I was a young Christian, I just started preaching. I'd come home from revival. I'd go up to the church. Our church was behind the Citrus Tower in Claremont. And uh, I had a key to the church. I asked the preacher, I, Pastor, can I have a key to the church? Well, sure. I'd go up there and pray. Well, I'd, I'd pray till I got happy, and I'd, 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 I'd just pray myself happy, and I'd just start singing. Now, I can't carry a tune in a slop bucket with a lid on it, <laughs> but it was just me and the Lord, and I I'm just, I'm just had me a time, amen. And so I'd pray till I got happy, and I'd sing a while, and then I'd pray a while and sing a while and preach a while, amen. Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm used to preaching to pews. It's all right. Doesn't matter. But it sure does help when folks come. And we are delighted you're here tonight to worship the Lord with us. Did anybody pray more today than you did yesterday? Amen. All right. Remember, Ian Bounds said it well. God does nothing except in answer to prayer. And so if we don't pray, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Now, I was thinking about that while she was singing the song uh, about uh, the rain and the wind and uh, Jesus in the boat. And, and uh, uh, notice they were going across uh, the Sea of Gennesaret. Jesus uh, uh, fell asleep in the hinder part of the ship. Uh, and they're bailing and rowing and bailing and rowing. And the Bible said they were filled with fear. Amen. Or they're afraid they're about to go under and they're, they're bailing and they're rowing until their arms feel like they're going to fall off. And what's Jesus doing? Sleeping in the back of the boat. And they just keep on bailing and keep on rowing and keep on being afraid. And Jesus, the answer, is in the back of the boat. Can I tell you something? Somebody's going to have to go wake him up. I said, somebody's going to have to go wake him up. Amen. He's going to sleep on until they cry unto him. Some of you are in trouble, and you're just waiting on him to come down and help you. He ain't coming till you cry. Woo! He's not coming till you wake him up. <laughs> Come on, amen. You just want him to dump it in your lap. He ain't going to do it. But oh, when they finally got to the place, they realized the answer was right there, and they went in, uh, and accosted him. Let me just put it that way. They called on him and woke him up. <laughs> he just stood up and said, peace be still, and it was over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why didn't they do that five or six hours before? Amen. Why don't we do that? 
Ooh, that's good preaching right there. So just wake him up, all right? If you're in trouble tonight, he's just waiting on you to wake him up. If you're in a storm tonight, he's just waiting on you to wake him up. He's not going to come and do it. You're going to have to wake him up, and then he'll do it. Hallelujah. And uh, notice that the, the scripture is really interesting. You know, he never put anything in there, Brother Eric, that didn't mean something. The Bible called it a great storm. Think about that. The word great there in the Greek is mega. We like mega bars, don't we? Because we get to eat all we want. (laughs) Amen. That's what the word means. It means grand or large. It was a mega storm. But the Bible said when he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, there was a great storm. Calm, hallelujah. So Jesus matched a mega storm with a mega calm. Woo, hallelujah. That'd make me want to shout a little right there. Praise God. If so, if you're in a storm tonight, a big one, he can match it with a, a mega calm in your life if you'll call out to him. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're praying, and I believe the Lord is hearing our cry tonight. If you have your Bibles, go to the Psalms tonight, Psalms chapter number 3. Psalms chapter number three, and uh, we do have devotional books there on the table. Uh, I wrote uh, it by quarters and uh, uh, have spring, summer, fall, and winter. Just got winter just last weekend, and and uh, so it's the last one, and uh, the Lord helped me with that, and I, I, I've, uh, I enjoyed writing them for the most part. It's a lot of work and a lot of trouble, but the Lord really helped me. I told Sister Christie we were talking about it last night. I, I, I'm not a writer, really, and I can't write unless I get anointed. Amen. I mean, I have to feel it or I can't write it. And I was telling her, I was up in North Carolina, and, and uh, I had, uh, uh, I just, I think I just had spring in that time, and, and there was a 13-year-old girl in the uh, in the service, and she begged her daddy to get her one of those little one of those books, and so he he consented and bought her one. And the next night, he went to get her to go to church. So he's walking down the hall to her bedroom, and usually the door was open, but it was shut that night. And and said so he just kind of tapped on the door, and he heard a little voice on the inside say, "Come in." And he said, oh, no, something's wrong. He said, I just opened the door and stuck my head in and said, there's that little 13-year-old daughter of mine sitting up in the bed with that book in her hand, squalling her eyes out. And I said, baby, what in the world is the matter? He said, Daddy, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is in this book. <laughs> yes, so I thought that was pretty amazing uh, for a 13-year-old girl. And I, I pray you'll be blessed by them. I, I get t- testimonies almost every day. And so I, I, I prayed over them and begged the Lord to, to use them. Uh, some folks were giving them to sinners. Amen. One lady bought them and gave them to her sinner children. One lady bought them for Christmas presents, and I thought, man, that's, a, that's an idea, man. Psalms chapter 3, Psalms chapter 3, going to begin reading verse 1, Psalms chapter 3, verse 1, if you there, say amen. Let's stand in honor of the word of the Lord, if you can, Psalms chapter 3, verse 1. I love this psalm, it's powerful, powerful. I'm only going to read six verses, but I pray the Lord to help me preach it like I feel it in my heart. David, David is praying now, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? You ever felt that way? He said, man, I look like I'm just surrounded by folks that want to get rid of me. And then he said, many are they that rise up against me. You ever felt like everybody and everything was against you? Amen. Whoa, and then verse 2 is worse. Many there be which say, notice, of my soul, not his body, his soul. He's talking about the eternal part of David, that that's going to live on and on forever. Many there be which say, of my soul, there is no help for him in God. You might as well forget it. You're not going to go to heaven. You can't, you can't make it. God's not going to let you. You're done. You're finished. It's over with you. Amen. 
But David had a response. But thou, Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Woo, that's shouting ground, isn't it? I love verse four. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. There it is. You got to call to him. You got to pray. You got to get his attention. You got to wake him up sometimes. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And I love this. And he heard me out of his holy hill. Woo, isn't it wonderful? wonderful when God hears you? Isn't it wonderful when God hears what you're praying and will answer you? He said, I laid down and slept. Ooh, nothing better than that, honey. Something had been troubling. He was afraid of all them that were against him, but now he prayed through. Hallelujah. Now he touched God and God touched him. And what did he do? I said, I went to, I laid down and went to sleep. Amen. Woo, just like a baby. Amen. He's not worried anymore. He's not, he's not concerned about it because he touched God. I laid me down and slept. He said, I awakened. I get tickled because I, I preach in Africa and black churches sometimes and they, 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 they love to testify and they'll get up and they'll say something like, Woo! Praise God. Man, I'm glad I'm saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and not with a mighty burning fire. And he woke me up this morning in my right mind. Hallelujah. It always tickles me. Amen. Well, he woke up in his right mind. I awakened. Why? For the Lord sustained me and God was in control. Now notice uh, verse 6. I love it. I will not be afraid of what? Ten thousands uh, plural uh, of people uh, that have set themselves uh, against me uh, round uh, about. Woo. Now think about that. Look at the difference in verse 1 and verse 6. In verse 1 he's scared to death. He's complaining to God. Lord Man, they're just everywhere and they hate me and they're against me. And Lord, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. But then he cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard his cry and he prayed through. And now look at him. There's a holy bonus. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me roundabout. Woo! Somebody needs to pray through tonight. Come on. You afraid of something? Just pray through. Get in the altar. Oh, us old timers. Notice I said us old timers. We used to pray through. Amen. Now we want to go to counseling. Now we got to do this and we got to do that. And we, Honey, I want to tell you, I believe in praying through. I believe you can pray through until there's not enough devils in a popka to turn you back. Come on. Amen. There's not enough people against you that can overpower you or destroy you. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Anybody come to have church with me? Amen. Slip your hand up and let's love him right out of our heart. Lord, what a joy and privilege and honor it is to be in the house of the Lord again tonight. I, I can say with David of old, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, thank you for your presence and your power that we feel in this house tonight. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Word. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your anointing. Lord, anoint us us and help us and move among us. Let the word of the Lord not return void but accomplish that that you please and prosper in the way we're into you sin it. Lord I'm believing and save sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost heal, deliver, set free God don't let us leave this house the same way we came have your will and your way in every heart and every life. We'll be careful to give you the praise and the honor and all the glory. Ask it in the name that is above every Every other name, the mighty and marvelous and matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Have your way in his name. and We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated tonight. The Lord, help me. I want to preach on don't count me out yet. <laughs> don't count me out yet. 
Hallelujah. In our text tonight, uh, uh, it's David uh, crying out to God. Now, why is David crying out to the Lord? Because he's in trouble. Big, big trouble. If you have a, a good Bible, then in the, the heading or the margin of your Bible, it'll say something like this. A Psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. So David is fleeing from his own son. He's fleeing because Absalom is coming to take his throne and to take his life. Think about that. And so David is literally running for his life when he wrote this psalm. Man, I tell you, that's some rough stuff right there. I'm thinking about that. I thought, Lord, why? Why would David have to run for his life? I mean, in in Acts, he tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. And I'm thinking, Lord, why is the man after your own heart having to go through all that he's going through in this psalm? Well, the answer is really, really very, very simple. And it can be summed up in one word, S-I-N, sin, S-I-N. Now, I know that's a word that we don't even want to talk about or hear in our generation. It's a a, a word that we minimize and we try to gloss over and we try to hide and we try to ignore but it's still real amen sin see earlier in David's life he had done some things that God wasn't pleased with and because of that David is having to pay the price he has done some things that he shouldn't have to do or he shouldn't have done and now he's reaping what he had sown we read about it in 2 Samuel chapter 11 in verse 1 notice and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and notice and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah but notice but David tarried still at Jerusalem oh man there it is and so all of Israel has gone out to fight against the Ammonites and Rabbah and the Bible said they were all there all except King David David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now I did a little research there. Very interesting. I looked the word tarried up in the Hebrew. Very very interesting word in the Hebrew language. It literally means to be at ease. To be at ease. And so the reason that David was not out in the battle was because David was living a life of ease and of pleasure. Think about that. That seems to be where much of the church is tonight. They're living a life of ease and pleasure. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could just impress upon us tonight how dangerous it is to allow ourselves to be at ease spiritually. I would to God that I could just open your heart wide open and pour into your heart the dread and the fear of ever being at ease with the Lord. I'm telling you church it's dangerous. It's dangerous to be like David and to come to a place of ease and comfort. Amos warns us about it doesn't he? In Amos chapter 6 and verse 1 he said woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Oh Zion was another name for the church and God pronounces a woe on anybody in the church that is living a life of ease. I was thinking about that today and I thought maybe that's probably what was wrong with the Laodiceans. They got into a place, Brother Myers, where they were living the easy life. They were rich, the Bible said, and increased with goods and had need of nothing. Oh my. And they slipped away from the Lord. They allowed the fire to go out in their heart and now they're living a lukewarm life of ease. But Jesus had an admonition for them. He said, listen, you need a revival. Hallelujah. I'm I'm telling you, I don't know a church in 
anywhere that doesn't need an old fashioned Holy Ghost revival I don't know of a church anywhere that doesn't need a move of God he said you need a revival hallelujah and then he put it this way be zealous therefore and repent the word zealous there is interesting in the, in the, the Greek because it literally means hot hearted he's saying listen you better get on fire you better get your heart heated up you better get out of this lukewarm condition because if you don't I'm going to spew you out of my mouth now today we don't think much about it today we just kind of dismiss it today we don't even worry about it but can I point something out to you there that the Lord showed me just a few weeks ago God doesn't look at lukewarmness as just something ho-hum something that we don't have to worry about and we don't have to be concerned with but God looks at lukewarmness as sin that must be repented of he said be zealous therefore and repent I believe that it's time for a lot of folks in the church and a lot of churches in general to do a whole lot of repenting because they've allowed the fire to go out and they're living a life of ease and comfort in this last day I don't want to be one of them so we all need to make sure that the fire is always burning in our heart hallelujah I remember years ago we were talking about it tonight I pastored the Mount Dora Church of God many moons ago I don't know 25 or 30 years time's got away been a long time but we had a ministerial association there and uh, two or three of the pastors were my buddies uh, and they just begged me to be a part of that and it was great I mean we just kind of took over the place uh, they, they didn't want us to talk about Jesus uh, at baccalaureate they weren't going to let us uh, read the, out of the Bible or sing uh, any kind of Christian song and, and we all had graduates all of our preachers and they're all moaning one day about it uh, and uh, I said boys uh, listen to me uh, we don't have to go along with that uh, they looked at me like what uh, I said we don't have to be a part of that uh, what do you mean I said man look at First Baptist Church Bob your church is big enough to hold this whole town nearly I said we can have our own baccalaureate and we don't have to bow down to them novel idea amen we had our own we wiped them out they didn't have enough to have church Woo! I'm telling you, First Baptist was almost full that night. Hallelujah. And the baccalaureate service downtown, they didn't even have a handful. We wiped them out. We took over. Hallelujah. Well, they, they, they made me secretary treasurer. And uh, so one day we had a meeting and I, they all had left, I thought. And I'm sitting there finishing out the notes of the meeting and counting the money and all that. And uh, I, I just had this feeling somebody's looking at me. And I, I looked around and there's Dr. Burley, a little black Baptist preacher. And he had a goatee and he's sitting there stroking that goatee. And I said, well, Dr. Burley, what in the world? Uh, how are you, son? He said, I'm good, I'm good. And he's stroking that goatee. And he said, well, Brother Hanks, he said, I've been watching you. And I said, you have, yes. Yes, sir, I've been watching you. I said, uh, oh, really? I said, well, what did you see? He said, well, you're different. Amen. I said, oh, yeah, I'm different. All right. I'm crazy. Amen. He, he said, no, 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 I didn't mean it bad. I mean, you're just, you're different than all these other guys. I said, Dr. Burley, what are you talking about? He said, I, 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 I don't know what to say except this. I said, every time I get around you, I feel the fire. Hallelujah. I said, Dr. Burley, I try to keep that on hand at all all times come on church I'm telling you if we've ever needed the fire of God we need it now we better keep it on hand Jesus said if you're lukewarm I'm going to spew you out of my mouth so we got to make sure we got to make sure that the fire is always burning brightly in our hearts now there's two reasons for that you probably ought to write them down number one because if it's not burning in your heart God is going to do something to get your attention Ooh, help me now Holy Ghost if it's not burning in your heart God is going to do something to get your attention hear me the reason David is going through what he's going through in Psalm chapter 3 it's simply God trying to get his attention brother Ron he wants to get David's attention come on amen that's right that is why he is going through that you know I, I was thinking about that sinner if you're here tonight maybe that's the reason you're going through what you're going through 
<laughs> Amen. You know why? God is just trying to get your attention. You've been hard-headed. You've been stubborn. The Lord's been dealing with you, drawing you, calling you. He doesn't want you to be lost. It's not His will that any perish. And you know what you've been? Hard-headed. Hard-headed. Amen. If you're watching by live stream, there's some hardheads out there. And you've just uh, uh, despised God and pushed God off and said no to the Lord time after time. Well, I can just tell you something's going to happen because God doesn't want you to die. He doesn't want you to perish and go to hell. So guess what he's going to do? Whatever he has to to get your attention. Amen. Oh, if I were you, I'd just give in to the Lord tonight. Maybe church member, you're going through it. Amen. Maybe you're going through it. You're in the middle of the fire or the storm or the trouble or the trial. You know what it might be? It might just be God trying to get your attention because you're not where you need to be with him or you may not be doing what he wants you to do. So you need to wake up and let the Lord touch you. A good example of what I'm trying to say is found in the book of Job. Now I don't know about you but when I read the book of Job I, I love it. I mean I, I'm thinking of Job as a, as a hero because it starts out with the devil having an interview with God. And God said have you looked at my servant Job? Have you been noticing him? Amen. He's an upright man and one that hates evil and all of that. And I'm thinking wow. Man Job is a real man. Hallelujah. Oh are you hearing me? But Job had a fall. Come on. Amen. I was just reading one day. I'd probably read it 10 or 15 times and it just went right over my head. I didn't get it. But one day I'm reading there and I got to Job chapter 16 in verse 12. And Job tells us why all of the tragedies and the heartaches and the trials came to him. Amen. He told us why. Notice what he said. I was at ease. Amen. Job said it himself. Amen. I was at ease just like David was. Just like David was. Oh, we got to be careful. I said we got to be careful because the same thing can happen to us. The same thing can take place in our heart. If we're not careful, we'll let the fire go out and we'll allow the things around us to cause us to be at ease spiritually. Job had everything a man could want. Amen. He was rich and increased with goods just like the Laodiceans were. Come on. Amen. And maybe because of that, then all this problem and calamity came upon him. Why? Because it caused him to come to a place of lukewarmness or a place of ease in his life. I was thinking about that today. Many in the churches today are in the same position. God has been so good to every one of us. He's blessed us beyond measure. We have more today than we probably ever had in all of our lives. But if we're not careful, all of the blessings of God turn into a curse because they draw our hearts away from the Lord and they cause us to become at ease spiritually. We got to be careful. And then, Listen to what he did to Job. When Job got to that place, God went to work. Now, you may not think God was very merciful, but if it saved Job from going to hell, he was very merciful. Ooh, very merciful. Notice God went to work on Job, and this is what he said I was at ease. But he, God, hath broken me asunder. Ooh. He hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces. <laughs> Man. Wow. I don't know how many times I read that before it dawned on me what he just said. He said, Man, I let myself be at ease spiritually. And God <laughs> rose up and started working on me. He broke me. He broke me. Man, have you ever been broken by the Lord? It don't feel good, I can tell you. Amen, I've been there. It doesn't feel good. And then he said, not only did he break me, he shook the daylights out of me. He shook the day. He got me by the nap of the neck and shook the daylights out of me. Amen. 
man. Ooh, man. I don't want the Lord to have to do that to me. I don't want the Lord to have to punish me that way. What a sad day it was for, for Job. I wonder, has your world been shaken up any lately? Has God been shaking your little world lately? Maybe God is trying to get our attention and get us to come back to the place that he wants us to be with him. And then notice not only if you get that way, is God going to do something about it to get your attention? But if you're at ease spiritually, the devil's going to use it as an opportunity to take advantage of you. Isn't that what he did to David? Didn't he take advantage of David when David was at ease? That's exactly what he did. The devil loves it when we don't pray through every day. He loves it when we let the fire go out. He loves it when we don't want to come to church. He loves it when we don't want to study the Word of God. He loves it because he knows what's going to happen. He's going to have an easier time at getting to us. Come on. When David was at ease, he, the devil came along and what did he do? He set a trap for him. He set a trap with a woman by the name of Bathsheba. And David commits adultery with her. And then to cover it up, he had Uriah, her husband, killed. I'm thinking, wow, amen. He thought nobody knew, but God knew. God knew all about it. He saw every bit of it. Are you hearing me? And he sent Nathan down to give David a message. He said, the sword shall never depart from your house. Hear that now. We're going to shout in a minute, but I want you to hear it. The sword shall never depart from your house. So in our text tonight, What's happening? The sword is coming after David for his sin. And the devil is trying to destroy him through his own son. Are you hearing me now? Oh, I want to shout it tonight. We need to be careful, church, because actions have consequences. Amen. Paul said in Galatians that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh, David was reaping a terrible harvest because of his sin with Bathsheba and the murder of her husband. It's a terrible thing. Be careful. But I want to hasten now and shout a little bit. I want to hasten to say that consequences have cures. Consequences have cures. Oh, you should have shouted right there. Amen. You should have shouted right there. Consequences have have cures. Notice that in our text, trouble has come and David is running for his life but while he's running he's praying. Woo! Hallelujah. I said while he's running, David is praying. Listen to him. In verse 1, Lord how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. He said, oh Lord I'm in a mess. I mean my enemy enemies are multiplying and multiplying and multiplying by the minute I'm in trouble and then notice what he said many they, be they which say of my soul there is no help for him in God you know what they were saying David you're done it's over God's not going to help you now you're a has been you're washed up you're finished amen oh I want to shout it now I love David's answer in verse number 3 notice what he said he said but thou O Lord art a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head hallelujah you know what David is saying hey man say whatever you want count me out if you want to but you better not count me out because God ain't finished with me yet God's not done with me yet oh I came by to tell somebody the devil may be telling you a thousand lies but it ain't over until God says it over shout amen oh hallelujah don't count me out Woo! hallelujah don't count me out yet <laughs> Woo, hallelujah David must have got shouting happy right about then Hallelujah. Don't count me out. You may be here tonight and you may be in trouble. 
You may be here tonight and you may be going through the darkest hour you've ever been through in all of your life. You may be here and people are mocking you and laughing at you and ridiculing your walk with God and they're saying there's no way. They're never going to make it. They'll never survive. Oh, they'll never, never do that. Oh, that reminds me of when I got saved. I was raised in a Lutheran church. I mean, dead or in four o'clock in the morning don't even describe them. They were twice dead and plucked up by the roots, man. I'm telling you, it was pitiful. And, but when I got saved, man, the fire of God got in my heart. And people in my church, they, 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 they were talking to each other. Oh, that'll, that'll last a month or two, maybe three. Amen. Another one said, oh, maybe six months. Huh? Honey, the fire still burning in my heart tonight. 46 years later, are you hearing me? Hallelujah. 46 years later, that fire is still burning in my heart heart. David's saying, listen, devil, don't count me out. All my enemies, don't count me out yet. Don't count me out yet. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't count me out yet. Don't count me out yet. Hallelujah. I'm not finished. David could say that. Why? Because God was three things to him that he is to us tonight. I want to share them with you if you'll let me. First, God was his shield. God was David's shield. Notice. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Most other translations translate that verse. A shield round about me. That's a better translation of the Hebrew word there. He wasn't just a shield on one side. But God was literally a shield around about David. In other words, there was no way that the enemy was going to get to David without coming through God. Can I just tell somebody tonight that if the devil's coming at you, he's got to come through God first. Amen. He may be trying to sneak up on your backside, but he's got to come through God first. He may come and may be coming from your left and your right both at the same time. But I'm telling you, God has your back. God has your side. God is your real reward. And he is in front of you. He is a shield round about you. And the devil can never overpower you without God's permission hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah and so he said what David was saying is God listen you 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 are my defense you Lord are my protector you're like a shield that's interesting because if you look at the history of shields I, I discovered this one day when I was looking at the full armor of God and uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, we t it talks about the armor of God. And I was going through that and I discovered something that, very interesting. In the, in the very early days of warfare, they, they would take wood and make shields out of wood and cover it, cover the shield with, with some kind of animal skin. <laughs> but, but the enemy was smart. He figured that out pretty quick. He figured out, I'll just take this arrow and dip it in some tar and I'll light it on fire, and I'll just shoot the, the armor. I'll just shoot the shield, if you will, and it won't be long. The shield's going to burn up, and they're going to be defenseless. Did you never read Ephesians chapter 6 when he said for us to take unto us the whole armor of God? Part of that armor was the shield of faith. Hallelujah. You see, we don't have to worry anymore about the devil shooting his fiery darts at our shield because our shield isn't made out of an old piece of wood with a little skin stretched over it. Our shield is the shield of faith. And Paul said it's able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Somebody ought to shout right there. I'm telling you tonight, the devil devil is going to try to assault your faith, but don't let him have it. Don't ever give in. Don't ever give up. Don't ever go back. Hallelujah. Just hold on to that shield of faith. It'll quench every fiery dart that the wicked will ever throw at you. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. 
Oh, help us tonight, Lord. And then notice second David said, not only is he my shield, but God is my glory. God is my glory. Now, I want you to notice David was shamed before all of Israel. And he was leaving Jerusalem in shame and disgrace. His son who was coming to take his throne and was going to try to take his life. And so now, Brother Herrick, he sees he's leaving in shame and disgrace. Shimei is standing over there throwing rocks at him and dust in the air and cursing David and calling him all kind of names. Abishai said, let me go over and take his head off. He said, oh, no, let him cry on. It's all right. And David walked out of Jerusalem disgrace. Grace, but notice what he said. But God is my glory. The word glory here is translated in other places honor. Honor. David is saying, It may look like I'm defeated, it may look like I'm dejected, it may look like I'm it's over for me. But I got news for you, honey. I'm serving a God that's able to restore my honor. He's able to restore my honor. He's able to help me. Hallelujah. I'm not always going to walk in shame. I'm not always going to walk with my head down. I'm not always going to walk in a defeated manner. We got a lot of our people that are walking around with their head down. They're walking around defeated day after day and week after week. Lift your head up. I said lift your head up. You're a child of the living God. You're an heir and a joint heir with Jesus. Lift up your head, oh ye gates. Hallelujah. And the King of glory shall come in. Ooh, hallelujah. That reminds me of a story I read a few days ago. I was reading about a slave trade. We got a lot of, they want reparations now. Amen. Uh -huh. And now they're assaulting white neighborhoods and demanding that we give them our homes. Really. They want me to give them something of mine but I never committed a crime. Amen. They weren't in slavery and they they're, they're, they want reparations for something they were never in and for something I never did. Amen. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. But, but I was reading about slaves. They brought a great slave ship into New Orleans many, many years ago and uh, there were some uh, people standing there uh, on the wharf and they were unloading those uh, slaves. They were chain manacled together and they were trudging down the wharf. Every one of them had their head down in shame and disgrace but there at the back of the line there was a big old black boy and his head was tall and erect his shoulders were square and he held his head high and somebody noticed that and they, they said to the guy that was working the docks look at that guy look at all the rest of them they're going down there with their heads down in shame and disgrace but that one guy look at him man he's got his head held high and his shoulders square what in the world's wrong with him he said oh listen he is a, the son of a, of a tribal leader in Africa and said his daddy told him his son always remember who you are you're the son of a king and you always hold your head high hallelujah and remember who you are I want to tell somebody amen and okay in the, in the popka tonight. I want to tell somebody on the internet tonight, whatever you do, if you're a child of God, don't mope around. Don't hold your head down. Lift it up. Hallelujah. God is on your side and God will touch you again. He is your glory. Have you failed God? Are, are people putting you down? Has the devil been aggravating you? Hold your head high. God can give you back honor and glory in your life. And then last, David said that God was not only his shield and his glory, but the lifter up of his head. Hallelujah. You know what David's saying? Don't count me out yet. 
God's not finished. He can lift my head up. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. David left with his head down. But notice, he returned with his head high. He left in shame and disgrace, but he came back in victory. Hallelujah. Absalom's dead. And now his army is defeated. And David returns to Jerusalem with his head held high in victory. Think about that. Oh, yes, sir. Now, to have your head lifted up meant two things in that day. First of all, it meant that you had been victorious over your enemy. And that's exactly what happened to David. God had given him the victory over his enemies. Your head may be hung low tonight, but listen, joy can come in the morning. Amen. Victory can come to you in this altar tonight. You don't have to wait for the next revival. You don't have to wait for Sunday or tomorrow night. You can have victory tonight in this altar and you can leave here rejoicing if you'll allow God to touch you. Second, it means to be restored to your former position. That's exactly what God did for David. He restored him to his former position. He gave him back the kingship of Israel and Judah. Think about that. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, that's what God would like to do to us. I was thinking about that today. I thought about Joseph. If anybody got a raw deal, it was Joseph. He was in in Potiphar's house and doing a fantastic job. And the Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him and he wouldn't have it. And he, he left her and she grabbed his garment. So Joseph ends up in prison for 13 years for a crime that he never committed. And in that prison one day, they heard the door open and they saw the king's butler and the king's baker coming through the door. They had done something that Pharaoh wasn't happy with, Brother Eric. And Pharaoh had them cast into the prison with Joseph. One night, they both had a dream and they were puzzled at the dream. And they're telling their cellmates, man, I don't know what this means. It's this weird dream. And somebody said, hey, there's a little Hebrew boy down in the cell so and so when it's break time just go to him and ask him he knows how to interpret dreams he went down Joseph do you interpret dreams well just tell me the dream and so uh, the baker said told him his dream and Joseph said man I got bad news for you son in three days we're going to hang you they're going to take your head from you sure enough three days later that old baker he died they hung him but he got to the butler and when he got to the butler the butler told him his dream and then this was the interpretation in Genesis 40 and 13 yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place hallelujah there it is it meant to be restored to a former position but to be restored to a former position hear me now some of you need to be restored to a former position shout amen right there I said some of you need to be restored to a former position. What do you mean? Well, some of you used to have more victory in your life than you have right now. But God wants to restore your victory in this altar tonight. Come on, amen. He wants to give you back the victory that you used to have. Some of you used to have a whole lot more power with God than you have tonight. But God wants to renew renew and restore the power that you had with Him in this altar tonight. Some of you used to have a lot more zeal for the Lord than you have right now. But I came by to tell you that God Some of you used to have a whole lot more of the joy of the Lord in your life than you're experiencing at the moment. But I can tell you that God wants to restore unto you the joy of your salvation. So don't count me out yet. Amen. I may not have victory like I used to, but I got an altar that I can pray in. I got a God that will hear my cry and He'll help me and restore me if I'll call on Him. 
There is the key. There is the key. Look at verse number four. That's what David did. He said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. The word cried there means to cry out or to call out loudly. If you're in trouble tonight and you need help, I want to tell you just get in this altar and lift your heads to heaven and begin to cry out to God with all that is within you and the Lord can restore you. The Lord can give you victory and joy and peace and power and zeal. Whatever you need, God is able to do it. And guess what? When David cried, God heard his voice out of his holy hill. Woo! Hallelujah. God heard his voice out of his holy hill and God touched David. David prayed through. How do we know that? Because in verse 6, I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me round about. My God, in verse 1, he's about to have a, a stroke. His enemies are all around. He's scared out of his wits. But honey, when he prayed through and he remembered that God was his shield and God was his glory and God was the lifter up of his head. Amen. He prayed through and saw the greatness of God and he said, bring them on. Bring them on. Don't count me out yet, enemy. Bring them on. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid now. Ten thousands of them can come against me. It's all right because God is on my side. Don't count me out yet. Stand with me all over the house. Somebody come to the piano tonight. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Please, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody praise him in this place. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is here to help us tonight, church. Hallelujah. While heads are bowed and eyes closed, have you felt the Lord? Have you been like David? Have you failed the Lord? Have you done something that maybe God wasn't pleased with? Have your head been hung down lately? Have you been walking around with the mully grubs? Has the enemy been trying to destroy you? Are you going through a hard time? I want to tell you, God, God is in this place to revive you and restore you. God is here to help you in this house tonight. If I was a sinner in this house, you know what I would do? I wouldn't be a sinner any longer. You know what I'd do? I'd look the devil in the eye and say, devil, don't count me out yet because Brother Hanks is going to give me a chance to pray and I'm going to go to that altar and I'm going to give my heart and my life to the Lord. I'm going to surrender to him and his will and the Lord's going to save me tonight. Devil, don't count me out yet. If you're here and you're lost, why don't you make your way to the front? Maybe you're a backslider. If I were you, you know what I'd do? I'd look the devil in the eye and I'd say, devil, don't count me out yet, buddy, because God is going to help me in that altar. I'm climbing up out of this hog pen. I'm going to make my way down to the front of that church and I'm going to let the Lord restore me and bring me back again. Maybe you're here and the joy of the Lord isn't bubbling up in your heart. Maybe you're here and the zeal of the Lord isn't what it ought to be. Maybe you're here and you're going through a storm or a fire or a trial. I'm telling you, God wants to help you in the altar tonight. Amen. Maybe you're having trouble on your job or in your marriage or at the house or with your children I'm telling you don't count me out yet I can still pray and I can still believe God and I can still trust